Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeer Studio and today I'm sharing with you an art journal page that I made while I was on vacation in Sedona, Arizona recently. And this is my Dilusions small journal and this is the one I took with me. I have very limited supplies and in fact you'll see me writing on a piece of yellow paper the things that I forgot. Um, the, the most important one being a heat tool to dry this stuff. So I forgot bulldog clips to keep my journal open. I forgot so many things. There, it becomes a very long list because I was just throwing things together at the last minute. I was on my way to my son's graduation. I just, I knew that I would be up there for a week and I wanted to have some art supplies plus some things to, to use when I did the live show while I was up there. Um, Obviously, this is not my studio. This is just a table in the place that we were staying, and the light is not as bright because I don't have any dedicated light. I did try to be by the windows, and I had a, had lights on and everything, but, you know, it's still darker than normal. So I have my book of um, things that I threw together. Uh, we were talking about having supplies available when you are somewhere else to do art and I've I have not been home a lot lately I've been in a lot of places and we um, on the live show Peg and I talked about making a, um, a collection a, a collection of things that you could use while you were somewhere else and so this this uh, book is what I had started to make I haven't really finished it I haven't really finished anything um, I just I'm all, it seems like I'm always running somewhere and I, and when I am at home, I'm just tired and I don't want to work on stuff like this, but I do have some things in this book that I've collected and that's what I brought with me to use for supplies while I was traveling. So I grabbed a couple pieces of paper uh, from, from the book and the one on the left is, it was made during a video where I was making collage papers using ink tints blocks. Now ink tints blocks are a water soluble product but then once they're dry they are permanent and so as you can see on that piece of paper which is deli paper by the way um, I drew a lot of stuff on there some squares and whatever and it looks kind of like crayons or pastels but when I go over the top of it with the matte medium and this is a fluid matte medium it doesn't move at all it's very permanent on that paper once it's dry. You have to water activate it, but once it's water activated, it's dry. And when I made that paper, I drew with the ink tints blocks and then I sprayed it with water and let it all activate and, you know, maybe, maybe blend it a little bit or whatever. But then when it was dry, it's just, it's as permanent as, as it could possibly be. The other piece of paper that I used is um, pastels. Uh, pan pastels on the gel plate so it's also doesn't smear or anything because it's been picked up the pastels are picked up and it's a different video <laughs> the the pastels are picked up with acrylic paint and so they they um, adhere to the acrylic paint and become permanent so these are great collage papers to use um, no matter how you make them that the one on the right was made with the stencil girl stencil and it's not in any video um, the technique, there's a video, and I'll link both of those videos of techniques that I use to make these papers in the iCard above so that you can watch those if you haven't seen them already. So after I had applied the papers, and at this point I didn't have any, any theme or idea for this page, um, I'm just making, I'm just putting stuff down. I'm putting, I found some colorful papers and I was thought that they would look nice so I just put them down on the pages um, but after I did that I unified everything with a little bit of acrylic paint uh, I brought five bottles of acrylic paint with me the primary colors being um, well in this case they're Dina Wakely paints so they are lemon ruby and lapis which are yellow red and blue the primaries and you can make any color with that and then for tinting or shading I brought the opaque white from Deco Arts Traditions and the carbon black from Deco Arts Traditions. So that's all the paint that I have. And you know, I'm I'm a heavy acrylic paint user. <laughs> I do like to use acrylic paint a lot. But if you know just a little tiny bit about color blending, 
you can go with the primary colors and the black and white for tinting and shading and that's all you really need so if you're traveling those are good options um, i also did bring a, a travel pan of watercolors and some um, neo color two crayons and some scribble sticks as well for color uh, but really you can you can get away with a small amount of stuff and I will have the links to all the products that I brought with me in the description box below you can see it's not a very long list you know it's it's really not so then I went through my collage collection book and I'm finding some things in there to use on my page and in another video which I guess I'm gonna have to now put in the iCard uh, Peg and I were working on making like little little uh, embellishments you want to call them or just like little little collage pieces that you could use at a later date if you want to make a quick page or a quick pro project and I do have several of those in my folders inside my collage um, book collection book whatever and so I decided to use one of those and then I had a dictionary page that was thrown in there that had some petroglyphs on it and this is when I got the idea of what I wanted to make the page about because in Sedona it, if you've ever been there it's it's an amazing place it's very beautiful very spiritual it's you're surrounded by these ancient rocks and formations that were created over millions of years by water and time and and they just they're they're profound they're something that just you just have to look at and it's it's hard to describe it's hard to describe the feeling that you get when you're there but it's obviously also very touristy and expensive and you know everybody wants to go there for that reason but it is also truly an amazing place and I love to go up there it's only uh, four hours from where I live so I can go up there and my mom has some timeshares and we go and stay in the timeshare so the result of all that thinking and all that um, idea is that when I saw these little things that were on the dictionary page they're petroglyphs pictures of petroglyphs and they're not very good pictures because it's in a dictionary but I started thinking about the people that came before us and there were certainly people in Sedona before you know the Americans got there um, I have visited several sites around the area where there are cliff dwellings in fact there's one that's three stories high up inside of a cliff on a wall and and there's not a lot of information about the people that live there but I know that ancient peoples created art just as we do they they made you know petroglyphs and clay cave art that still exists and you can still visit it in so many sites around the United States and I'm sure other places have the same type of um, cave art I've never visited any in another country but I know that people have been creating art to inspire them to record history to um, express their interest in what surrounds them since since people have been around that you know forever that it's always been something that people have done and so I kind of themed this page around the Southwest the American Indian and um, the places that I was and also the idea that art has been created throughout time and will continue to be created long after we are gone you know our future generations will always have some sort of self-expression and how important that is to history and to the human experience and so I this is definitely a Sedona or Southwest certainly inspired page I made some cliffs and rocks and um, I have a piece of tissue paper that has a stamped image on it that was stamped in an archival ink so it's a permanent ink which is a stamp that I carved myself of the saguaro and some you know an ocotillo and some prickly pears um, it's a self carved stamp that I made 
a while ago, I don't even know, a couple years ago, and it's been stamped on tissue paper so that I can carry it around with me. I had several stamped if, uh, images on tissue paper, which is a great way to have a lot of images to use on your projects when you're traveling. So um, I started with some scribble sticks there and drew out some cliffs like rocks that are vertical like they are in Stona and I used another piece of paper there to kind of create a base of where I'm going to plant my saguaro <laughs> and then I mixed up some kind of brownish red um, reddish brown I guess it would be acrylic paint and I'm using a paintbrush to fill in and to just create a base for my page I have that collage element over on the left and then I'm you know building up the right side so all my colorful paper has been calmed down a little bit I used a brayer and um, applied some kind of uh, brownish well I also use inks I use the vintage photo ink and a stencil that has an interesting design on it around the edges. Um, then I kind of made a color paint that was similar to that, only lighter, and just calmed down the background so that my um, my images that I'm putting on would stand out more. It was a little bit bright, <laughs> but it still matched this collage element that I made at some at some point when we were doing the live stream. So, um, yeah. This, this was a fun page. I'm also using some permanent glue stick because I realize that <laughs> I don't have my heat tool to help everything stick down um, in a timely manner if I use my uh, matte medium. It, it, it's not even a gel matte medium, it's more of a fluid one, so it takes even longer to dry. So. When I can, I'm using my glue stick, and then I'm also using the matte medium. Like with the tissue paper, you want to use a fluid matte medium to stick it down because it makes the tissue part kind of disappear into the background, which is nice. So, yeah, this was a fun page. I was, you know, having a good time making this, not really thinking about filming, but I did film it because I had my filming equipment with me so that I could share it with you at a later date. So here are my uh, my dictionary pages that I, the little pictures I cut out from the dictionary and that that was petroglyph was there were the examples for the word petroglyph and the definition of petroglyph so that's where they came from. I know it's kind of weird dictionary pages yeah they they had there was writing on the page too but I cut the example photos out off the page and put those down at the bottom. I'm still using a little bit of acrylic paint. Um, I didn't bring a palette, so I'm using just a folded up piece of deli paper to uh, blend my paints and make, in, make it into a little bit of a palette. Adding a little bit of highlighting with the lighter colors. And I also have a die cut piece of something that kind of looks like scrub brush or something or um, that I had in my stash of stuff. I don't know where it even came from, but I put that on too and just kind of make a collage with a lot of different things, but they have meaning to what the page is about and where I'm at and um, all that. So if you've enjoyed this, please remember to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment or question below. That always helps my channel to, um, grow because it helps YouTube realize that it that I have something valuable on my channel that's interesting to people and then they share my video. Also you can pin it, you can share it, you can put it on Facebook, all those type of things help. And of course um, the newest weirdest thing that I have to tell you is that if this is the last video that you watched please uh, click on to something else, um, something that has a lot of followers and doesn't really matter so that uh, you know, this isn't the last thing you watched and I get punished for that. <laughs> that's so weird for me to say that, but that's really apparently how it works. Um, the last thing I'm doing is I'm mixing um, some scribble sticks with a little bit of 
of the acrylic paint and applying those to my cactus with my water brush to give it a little bit of color, um, adding some other color here and there with some scribble sticks and blending that with my water tank brush just to finish up to get everything done. Um, I thought I needed like a little bit of blue or turquoise up in the sky just to indicate that that is sky area. And then I think the last thing I do is um, I write something on it with my Posca pen. Yeah, I forgot to bring a ruler. That's another thing I forgot. <laughs> yeah, here I am writing. That area is pretty dry. I'm tr trying to, you know, wait till everything is dry because I don't want to ruin my Posca pen. But um, I'm using the edge of a piece of paper to keep my words straight because I, if I don't use a ruler or something, I write downwards, like all my words curve downwards. I don't know why that is, but that's what happens. It's very annoying. So I'm trying to keep everything straight and even and write the words with the, the uh, fine tip black Posca pen. And then I think I use my white Posca pen as well to add highlights because that's what I do. That's what I always do. I made a few sketchy lines around the um, photo area just to keep to, to help those stand out a little bit going over my words and yeah I'm pretty sure I'm going to bring out the white Posca pin any minute here I'm sure it's going to happen <laughs> I guess I'm still messing with the black one I don't know but anyway this is uh, one of two videos that I will show I did make another page I didn't do a lot of art while I was traveling I mostly just chilled out um, rested uh, looked at the nature, watched TV, and generally just was a vegetable until such time as we went to the graduation and all that celebration. So yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.